We're going to take another look at this crap K mechanism Panasonic made VCR sold by RCA that shuts down when you press the stop button. Now, this one was serviced by my former shop that I worked at. Um, it had a head mounted backwards from the previous service, so God knows what else is wrong with it, but you press the stop button and the power shuts down. So let's, let's see what's wrong. Okay, we're back in the shop on this uh, Panasonic made RCA that I dealt with on the last video. And uh, to refresh everyone's memory as to what's going on with this one, when you press stop, it shuts down. So if I press play, or start it up, play a tape, everything plays fine. If I press stop, it should unload the tape. But what's happening is I press stop, and the power just goes off. I gotta turn the power on again, and then it unloads the tape. And then I can rewind it or fast forward or whatever. I I think probably, as I discussed in the other video, it's likely the mode switch. So let's deal with it. Look at this. I got to fix my ceiling fan in here because I went to turn it off and the ball chain fell off on it. So maybe we'll fix another fan switch. Save me the five dollars of buying a new switch. Maybe we'll just change the switch. I'll I'll deal with that. I need I I'm good oh wow I I got air conditioning in here now and I got a little portable fan that's running now to keep me cool when the AC is not on like right now I cooled it down cooled the shop down uh, when I was working on this before but with the time of day power billing that I've got now I don't want to run the AC when the rate goes up so I I'll run it earlier in the day and then shut it off and then just deal with try to keep it cool in here keep the door closed and try to keep it cool because it's getting pretty warm out today. And I got it nice, comfortable, about 24 Celsius in here. Now, at least it's not, I'm not dying like when it usually gets up to like 30 plus, 32, 33 in the shop here. It just becomes brutal. Ceiling fan, I usually use that in the winter when I'm running the heat because heat rises. So I use the ceiling fan to blow the heat down. So I really don't need it as much now, but we're going to deal with that as well. Uh, I got the soldering iron warmed up. We're going to try this mode switch and see whether this mode switch is, is bad. I suspect that that's what the fault is on this, is the mode switch itself is dirty. We'll see if we can remove this thing without having to take the whole machine apart. Oh, it's been years since I've done one of these ones, so I almost forget how to do it. I know it's held in place with one screw, and I should be able to, if I can get in there with my soldering iron, undo it and pull the switch out. It almost looks like the alignment's not right on here too. Maybe that's what's wrong. It looks like it's off by a little bit, but I think I have to pull the front loader out to get at this one. Hmm. Man, it's been so long since I've worked on one of these. I forget what I, what I always did. I should be able to get to it. I think I, it's probably easier if I pull the, uh, the tower gear and, or at least pull the pinch roller, pull the front loader and um, get that out of the way. I think I'll do that. So to do that we're going to remove the the uh, quick connect here. Push down. Do you guys see what I'm doing or is it, or is it oh, too much light? We're going to push down on here and that will release those wires. The black wire goes to the front. The black marker goes to the front. And we'll pop the front loader off this machine. some screws out of the bottom of course of course I'm gonna pull the bottom off right always got to pull the bottom off get that out of the way pop these clips okay. now I can pull the front loader four screws that hold the front loader on. They are red.
And that last one is down over here. Now there is a timing mark on this. So we have to make sure that we're in the correct position. The timing mark is um, right down here. Make sure, make sure that I am in the correct position first of all. So if we look down on this gear down here, it's right there. And it points at this little gear. That's in the unloaded position. So when I pop it out, well, that'll just lift out anyway, but that gear has to be pointed at that position there. And in that mode, this mode switch should actually be, there should be a, you can see this here, where am I here? See this, it's off just a bit. That should be more like pointing at that cutaway there anyway. Um, beside the point, we'll, we'll get to that. I just want to get the front loader out of the way just because, well, it's in the way. So I'm going to get the soldering iron in here and we'll get the solder sucker in and we'll, we'll take off that solder and then I can lift this mode switch out and I can probably do it without taking out the tower gear or anything because that way I don't have to worry about the mechanism getting untimed. Okay, now I'll just use the solder sucker. Just, just, just heat it up and suck it away. I'll remove this little screw down here. And then we'll just just lift the switch up. I'll just throw a little bit a little more heat on here just to to break the bond of any of them that didn't come undone. like that and now I can lift the switch out and we can take the switch apart got a cut washer on here we'll just lift that off like that and open the switch up and oh, the switch is dry it doesn't look to be filthy but it certainly is uh, dry it's, it's, it does it has no like no cleaner or no lubricant on here so That's dirty, but it's not it's not as bad as some of them that I've seen. I guess there's some dirt over here, but I'll get some of the deoxid red crap. Shall we see how much dirt comes off of these? A little box deoxid on there and just give them a wipe. switch back together and put the cut washer back on. This is an early one. It had a cut washer on. But once you get them back together, they, uh, they generally would hold pretty good. Spin this around a bit. Polish up those contacts. We'll set the little hole back here to the, the mark. And uh, throw the switch back in and see whether that fixes it. We'll go over a few other faults that these machines quite often had as well before I throw it together. But for now, let's just get that switch back into position.
and get it into the right position when I put it in place here. Because I'm off by one tooth. And I think that's probably as close as I'm going to get it. That looks to be right. Put the screw back in. And then, of course, tack down the, the switch again. Another problem, or quick comment on these machines, which I will go over, since I've got the basket out and we can, we can see the part I'm going to talk about. This is the same chassis that the AG1970, I think 1980 used the same one, it's junk. It's, um, it's a two motor design because Panasonic got really cheap. So there's only two motors in this entire unit. One to spin the head drum and the other one to operate the capstan motor. Everything else was driven off the capstan motor. Um, it's done with a clutch and the solenoid here. The solenoid kicks to change the mode and that operates a clutch. And what quite often happens is there's a thermal fuse right here under this, this blue tape. You can see it. There's the thermal fuse right there. At least it's, at least it's accessible. You can cut this and, and jumper it or put a new one in if you want. If these machines, if you notice that they're not going click, click, and you don't see this moving, thermal fuse goes bad and what causes this to blow is the mode switch gets dirty and this thing starts doing this on on its own even when the machine's not doing anything the thing will just start clicking if it's sitting there and you hear it going click 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 it's the mode switch is bad or capacitors in a power supply are bad and um, it will cause the solenoid to heat up once it gets beyond the trip temperature of this little thermal cutout the thermal cutout melts and then the machine won't work. So bear that in mind. If this thing's not moving, it's going to be that. You can measure it. You can measure it across here. Got to cut the tape to get to it. Okay, um, but that doesn't appear to be a problem on this one. Other faults that these machines have quite common failures is the uh, capstan drive IC. The solder connections back here break and they don't appear to be bad on this one. As I'm moving it, I don't see the pins moving. So they're okay. But that will cause weird things to happen, like the machine to stutter and momentarily freeze and stop. And yeah, uh, I see the connections go bad back there. But again, um, that is not an issue on this one, at least not at this point. I don't want to fix too many things on this because I'd like to be able to use this machine for future study if things break on it drop the cassette basket back in it's in the fully ejected position so that is that we'll drop the screws back in here and uh, test it and see whether it works see whether it doesn't shut off if it still shuts off then I got to do some more research but nine times out of ten it's the mode switch could be a it could be a timing error too right because I don't know the history of the machine these are a fairly easy chassis to work with. There's another switch on the side here on the cassette basket which I didn't get to. But there is another mode switch on the side here which I didn't touch. Alright, we'll plug this thing in. You see, that, that's normal. It does the double click there. Okay, and I press stop, and it should have oh, I still got a problem. It just shut off. Well, what the hell? I was sure it was going to be the mode switch, but um, apparently it's it's not. It's something else. So now I have to uh, check the timing of the mechanism. 
so we'll just pull this basket once again because it makes it easier to uh, check all the, the alignment of all the gears. See what it does is when you hit stop, the mechanism moves forward first and then it comes back. And it might be jamming before it uh, gets into that reverse mode. So we'll just check the timing of all the mech all the gears in the mechanism, see if something has skipped a tooth. That's always a possibility. So up comes the loading mechanism again. And um, let's check the timing. I think I can see the problem here. In the in the stop mode, I'm off by one one notch. I think that's it. I just pull this top piece off here, off of the uh, the controller. that out of there and lift off the pinch roller and then just I'm just going to lift the tower gear ever so slightly I don't want to change the timing on it I just want to move this over so that the the hole is lined up with the little V right so we're going to lift that up just a bit yeah flip that forward holding me up here. This is holding me up. Let's put it into the loaded position. Uh, the second the second position in should be in the tape loaded position. So if I turn this, that's the cassette basket dropping. And then it does the first phase and then I click this solenoid in once and turn clockwise and that should be fully loaded so the timing march should line up on this gear now actually they should be pointing at each other there should be a hole back here and uh, uh, oh they look they look to be the tower gear might be off by one tooth here Bring this back. Let's see whether our alignment is correct now. We'll try that. I'll put the controller back on. Got yellow molly coat on it. Put the top on. Get the front loader back in. Okay, now stop. That's weird. What if I try some of the other modes to play? Forward, forward search, reverse search. Yeah, it's sticking. It's still sticking. Won't go into reverse search either. You do see the problem. In the stop position, you can see that this gear, this timing mark, should be pointing at where are we here? You guys can't even see what I'm talking about. Get my camera moved. Okay, in this top position, which is two clicks in, after you load the tape down, it's in the it's in the load the half load position. That and that should line up, and this one's off by a tooth. So we're gonna we're gonna bring that one back by one tooth, make that one line up, and then retime the tower gear. So we're gonna do that by removing that gear. Then I can lift this one and move it to where it belongs. So we'll turn it over on its side. We're going to turn this gear 
back to have both teeth lining up exactly off by one position. There we go. Now that one's lining up. So I've got those two teeth I showed you, the two holes, are lining up on the bottom. Then I can bring the tower gear back into place, get the light out of the way so you guys can see what I'm doing. Bring the tower gear back into place and everything should line up properly on it now. Lift that up, we'll drop this in. Okay, we line up our tower gear. There's a, there is a mark on here, it's hard to see. I gotta try to get the light in there to see what there is. You see it there, now you can see it. Do you see it better without the light? No, you can't. Anyway, there is right here a, a keyway. And that lines up with this gear here, that marking there. And on the back side, over here, our mode switch is lined up with another hole on the back side here. We're lined up, you see? Our mode switch is lined up with that hole. That is now correct. We put the pinch roller back on and put the top piece back on and then unload the mechanism because this is in the cassette down position so we're going to hit the the solenoid here we're going to turn it counterclockwise from the bottom to unload the tape and then one more and then we're going to bring this back to line up the timing mark right here the little arrow on it that's going to line up with the cam gear that's the unloaded position not that one one's got a dot the other's got a little arrow it's the arrow that we're looking for oh how I don't miss this K mechanism that's the K mechanism by the way it says right there K I call it garbage mechanism garbage mechanism it's funny we used to joke about that all the time every time a manufacturer had a G chassis we always used to say G is in garbage All right, let's give it a try this time. Play. Stop. There you go. Just the mechanism was out of time by one tooth. Back to play. Stop and eject. There we go. Now it's working. So, mode switch was, uh, well, it was dry. I lubricated it and cleaned it. But uh, ultimately, it was the, the chassis on the bottom. That one tooth was off. And that's what was causing the problem. Here's the bottom view of this piece of junk. As I say, everything's done by two motors and um, a clutch assembly and planetary gear sets and you name it, I mean it's just, everything's driven by one, one motor. It loads, it threads, it operates the caps and it operates the real drive. It's just a, just a mechanical nightmare. Get all these cams and cam gears working everything, right? You see the clutch releases there when you change modes, go to stop. It's going to activate that solenoid, which is going to engage this clutch, which is going to operate these gears to unthread the tape. I mean, it's just, this machine is just, it's just a mechanical nightmare. And to eject the tape, well, we'll watch, it'll actually, this cam will actually transfer power over to this other gear up here. I'll lower down the camera a bit so you guys can see what I'm what I'm talking about. Okay. 
So if I hit eject, I'll stop and eject. Okay, now watch. This cam will roll back. And there's another little lever here that changes the, uh, there's a, a planetary gear set here, which when this cam goes in, it changes the position of another gear set to transfer power over to this gear. So watch on load. It's just, we don't know. That moves in, that when that moves in, that changes that, turns that off, and transfers power back over here. Watch. See? I think this is the planetary gear set under here. It turns the power off from this one. This cam moving changes the clutch from supplying power to another gear that's under here. I think yeah, there's another gear underneath this one. So there's two gears stacked. There's another midway gear which attaches to the planetary gear set to transfer power to this little metal gear here to operate the cassette mechanism and it's controlled by this cam here of this lever which is controlled by this main cam so what it does is this will go in first and then this will this will move and that'll switch the planetary gear set so instead of it sending power to that that midway gear in behind it'll then send power to this one so watch you'll see this this will turn first and then this one once this moves the power will transfer to this gear so it's not turning now and now once it does now this gear is turning which of course operates this cam, which operates this gear, which operates the loading mechanism. All in while the clutching system over here for the take up and supply. Very complex machine. It's got, it looks like a little tape deck head. That's actually reading a magnetic signal that's recorded along the edge of the gear for speed. But it's working now. It's, uh, but again, these machines here are very, very fussy. And all it takes is your alignment to be off by one tooth, as it was here, to cause the whole thing to screw up. I remember having to service like hundreds of these machines. And I didn't like any of them. I don't think there was one of these machines that I actually liked. This was advertised as the, oh, the solid aluminum die-cast chassis is going to give you years of service. Well, it might have been a solid aluminum die-cast chassis, but the mechanical complexity to control everything was just a goddamn nightmare. Oh, look. What is this? What is this just stuck here? Do you see what I see? I see a little clip. I think that little clip belongs right onto this. There's a little Jesus clip here. Look at that. There's a little clip right there. It's just stuck by grease. That... I believe belongs on here to hold this in place. We'll just take that off. That clip, I think, I think that clip goes on here. Pretty sure that clip goes right on here. And that's what holds this together. That's probably how it got out of timing. Was that skipped a tooth? That is supposed to be on like there. How did that fall off? That was just stuck over there. Hmm. Okay, anyway, <laughs> done with this thing. Done with this one. All right. Oh, that uh, might help if I put the belt back on. Last time I checked, it, it requires the belt to operate everything. There we go. All right, that works. Okay, all right, I think I've done enough on this one. I've done enough damage here. Uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Bye.